Hi, this is George Lynch. Um, I'm just sitting here in my 60-track uh, SSL studio in my house. Uh, what'd you think of that, Matt? Sounded great. That's, That's my right. assistant. That's my assistant, Matt. And we're just doing some work on the new Lynch Mob album. Anyways, welcome to George Lynch's Guitar Bible, and uh, I hope you learned something. Good luck. We got to get back to work on the record. I'll talk to you in a little bit. Want to try that again? Okay, try track 45 this time, okay? 45. Yeah, okay. Roll it. We're going to make an attempt at doing a Hendrix number, Voodoo Child, which is one of my favorite tunes when I was a kid growing up. I used to play to it over and over endlessly for hours and hours. It's like, and it still mesmerizes me, you know, the emotion that he packed into that song. So I'm going to make an attempt at playing it, and I'm using semi-authentic equipment here. It's a 57 Strat, real thing. I'm going in through a rat pedal because we don't have a Dallas Arbiter fuzz face like Hendrix used. Got a chrome top Wawa. Well, actually not a chrome top, but we got a Wawa pedal. And uh, Echoplex. And it's going into a Marshall. Um, 74, I think. 100 watt Marshall with 25 watt Celestian speakers. Try to get that old 60s and 70s basic rock guitar sound. So let's make an attempt at it. Here we go. Okay, the first exercise we're going to do is um, like a pedal warm-up exercise using your pinky on the 12th fret and alternating between pinky third, pinky second, pinky third, pinky first. So it's just... And what that's good for is to help with your pedal technique, which Ingve uh, uses a lot. That that kind of style, classic rock style.
next exercise um, is an attempt to strengthen the second and third fingers. Most guitar players tend to neglect to work these two fingers. We have plenty of strength in our index finger, so what I do is fold it back behind the neck, and let's play the pentatonic shape, first position, just using these two fingers, or these two fingers. Okay, so it goes something like this. And you can play that in the relative minor position, uh, going down to F sharp, you can get more of a stretch, make it a little more difficult. The next technique uh, for warming up would be to just bar the fifth fret uh, using a pentatonic scale and just practice hammering on without moving your first finger and getting as much out of the note as you can without using your right hand. So. This warm-up is a pentatonic exercise in the fifth and first position, alternating between the two, two strings at a time. And it can be used with alternate picking, and slowly it goes something like this. And then you want to go back down. Now we're going to be talking about picking, and uh, I got a pretty unorthodox style as far as picking. I hold my pick, pointed towards the back of my hand. Uh, I hit the string with my finger, the pick, and then my thumb. It's sort of a rake sound. Uh, sounds like that. And uh, for slow picking, uh, mostly downstrokes. Uh, if you want to play fast, I would suggest. You practice alternate picking, which you alternate between downstrokes and upstrokes. The next kind of picking I want to show you is what it could be called fan picking. And it's kind of a, uh, a cheap excuse for alternate picking. It's not as clean. It's something I think Eddie Van Halen sort of pioneered. But he does it with his hand above the string. I do it with my hand tucked under the string. And it's usually used just on the, on the uh, first or second string. And this is what it sounds like. Thumb picking, uh, well, you kind of need a, a long thumbnail to do it, right? But um, and it, it's something I got from Hendrix. Hendrix used to do that a lot. So just...
Some other picking techniques you can use is uh, one, picking behind your thumb, kind of plucking the string and using your second finger. And then I, I kind of tuck my pickup between my first and second finger and play the octave. Uh, sounds something like this. Also, you can tap that with your forefinger or second finger. And using your pick can sometimes be used uh, for a trill effect. So, for instance... So these are all examples of different ways of picking uh, with your right hand using your pick or picking behind your first finger with your thumb or tapping it at the octave. And uh, so this, here's some examples of that. start off with, uh, a couple of harmonic points that you want to keep in mind are there's a position right over this pickup and midway in between the neck position, bridge position pickup where you can get different uh, harmonics when you pick. Also up and down the neck there's a lot of different places you can get different harmonics. And it's also uh, in the way that you use your left hand, you, know, you can get different, different, different uh, tones out of it. Um, so I'll just uh, demonstrate that. Now. And uh, the palm technique is uh, it sounds like you're playing a real fast run, but actually all you're doing is running the palm of your hand down the length of the string and getting all, all, all the harmonics from this point back. So, and it's also used with, a, with a pulling off with your left hand. So kind of get this, this kind of thing going. Here. Muting it with your right hand. I think it's preferable to have a wide vibrato, meaning a lot of movement up and down from your starting point, uh, which sounds better, um, and slower too, and also be able to have control over it. So you should practice your vibrato as far as how far you stretch it and at what speed. And I think younger players tend to have a faster, narrower vibrato, and uh, more s mature players seem to have like a, lo a, a wider slower vibrato, which is more emotional sounding, and give you, help give you your own style, I think. Um, so I can demonstrate that. I can't demonstrate the fast one because I can't do it anymore, but I can show you the slow one. And I think it's important to learn to do it on all, with all fingers, so not, just, not just your third finger. So. I combine some harmonics with the vibrato. Use my first finger a lot to bend up, catch the note, and then vibrato it by hitting the note that I'm bending up to and then grabbing it like with the third finger. So, and hitting it once more with a harmonic, preferably. And uh, the other vibrato that I use, which actually I learned before I used my regular, regular vibrato, was uh, kind of a, I guess you call it horizontal vibrato. And I got that from mimic mimicking Jimi Hendrix records and listening to things he did on records, but I didn't really know how he was doing it, so I tried to emulate the sound. And I did that by what's called maybe jack, jack off vibrato. I don't know. So practice your jacking off. Okay? So here we go. <laughs> 
nervous sounding but it's a, it's more manic a little wilder so I mean you can combine that with the regular technique and it'll give you more stuff to draw from this is my ESP Tiger custom which is kind of a copy of my uh, kamikaze with a different graphic on it um, it's all maple maple gets a really bright sound really sticks out in the track um, it's not as warm as, let's say, mahogany, but um, I like the characteristics of the sound of this wood. I like one-piece bodies, extra thick bodies, seem to get a little bit more sustain. I like very wide necks, one and three-quarter inches at the nut, very large radius, which means that the fingerboard doesn't curve very much, and very high frets, the highest frets I can find, uh, for ease of vibrato. It uh, makes it a little harder to play quickly, but uh, it's better for bending strings. Uh, my neck is unfinished. I sand it down. It's, I go through necks quite, quite often because when you travel a lot with a guitar and it doesn't have a finish on it, um, it tend to warp easily, but uh, it feels better for me. Uh, my pickups are Seymour Duncan distortion, wound a little bit differently than a normal distortion. Um, single coil. I use a variety of single coils, but uh, this one I think is a Seymour Duncan staggered strat left. Um, I like using a single coil in my solos a lot of times, and I have a push-pull pot that I use. Um, sometimes I'll start off my solo sweep, sweep styles and, th and things like that. I'll use the single coil pickup, and then for something re really raunchy and a lot of sustain, I'll flick back to the humbucking, kind of like Hendrix used to do with his toggle switch, but more of a radical approach. Um, I've got it routed out in the back so that I can pull back and do some of that um, sitar-style uh, barring technique. And some of my guitars have reverse headstocks, which are just purely cosmetic. It doesn't really change the tone or anything like that. It's just for looks. And uh, that's about it. Okay, instead of using your left hand for vibrato, you can use the bar by pulling back on it, sustaining the note, wiggling the note with the bar, and also dipping the bar down and then coming up to the note. Um, so I'll show you examples of that. show you technique kind of an Indian sort of sound it's like uh, pulling the bar back behind the bridge and using it to sharpen the note and uh, use that in conjunction with more exotic sounding scales like a Spanish Phrygian mode for instance um, and demonstrate that for you
bubble tapping is, um, well, that's a Paul Gilbert phrase. It's something that Hendrix originally did. And that's just kind of getting a trill, usually in an open key, and injecting your right hand, just kind of doubling up on it. And you can move it around. And there's a variation you play over the top of the neck. It sounds sort of... <laughs> When I do tapping stuff instead of, like a lot of players do, uh, hit the note and hit it downward, I sort of pluck the note. And, uh, and uh, I just came up with kind of a spread, so a certain little melody in the tapping thing. You can try. It's 9, 12, 16 with the left hand, and any variation of 17, 19, and 21 that you want to use. And you use, uh, again, Paul Gilbert kind of trademark is a slide up from. 19 to 21 and back, real quick. basically an unschooled player and uh, I mean I've been trying to educate myself over the years and learn more theory but uh, early on I learned how to play and uh, look at the neck uh, and scales in terms of shapes uh, reoccurring patterns and so forth and not really knowing how they fit in theory wise but just that was kind of my my groundwork for finding my way around the neck and I still play that way and uh, um, an example of that would possibly be uh, an A, a major sounding shape for me, would be something like, like this. <laughs> and what it is, it's usually just uh, five or six, a uh, pattern of five or six notes reoccurring over two strings uh, and then moving up to the octave and moving up again. And uh, that's where I start from, and then move on from there. Um, staying with the idea of shapes, um, there's a thing Gary Moore does on one of his solos that uh, a lot of people have incorporated uh, into their style. And it's an open string thing with a reoccurring pattern, and it's slowly <laughs> You 
can also play that with your using your right hand. And a variation that I use on that is uh, instead of playing uh, on the tenth tenth fret, I just move my pinky up to the eleventh fret and change the shape to this. So it sounds like this. Another example of shapes, uh, but instead of descending and ascending across the strings, keeping the same pattern on two strings, but just continually moving it down to where it fits. Uh, kind of a retarded way of looking at it, but that's the way I learned how to play. Uh, considering we're playing an E, I would start here on the 15th, 17th, and 19th fret, and also using a little slide with my pinky, and also maybe sliding down a whole step and you hit the 15th fret on, on the B string, down to the 13th fret and back up again. So you get this kind of effect. stretch, you can pull your thumb back around the bottom of the neck. Uh, in this case, we'll use our thumb to anchor on the fifth fret, getting our pinky up to the twelfth. That would be hard to do with your first finger, but it's a lot easier to do like that. In fact, you can even get more of a reach and get that kind of a stretch. Um, and then just playing some kind of a melody. I'd start that from the 16th fret. Use my first and third fingers. Get that kind of a tone. Sliding that down a step and a half at a time. And each time I slide it down, I follow it with the right hand doing the same thing. So it's... This next thing I'm going to show you, which is uh, basically this kind of shape. And I take that shape and I move it up a step and a half at a time. What it's actually called, it's, I came up with the shape and then found out what it was. And what it's called is a C-sharp dominant seventh arpeggio. Ascending up the neck, step and a half at a time. And that's called a diminished in conjunction with sweep picking. And you, you just sort of, it's sort of a sweep, it's not really a sweep. So this, this is how it sounds. 
One exercise that I use, and I can expand on that a little bit later, uh, playing an A, I would use either two or four strings, uh, just this kind of a shape. It would be, uh, fret number would be four, six, seven, four, five, seven. And then repeating that on the B and E string. Or just, a, or just two strings at a time, however you want to play it. So, so. I'm going to play a variation of what I just showed you using right hand technique also with the slide. Uh, suppose we're playing an A. The reoccurring shape would be first, second, and fourth finger. Uh, moving up a fret and a string at a time. And there's a, you incorporate a slide with your little finger. So it would be four, five, seven, sliding up to eight and back to seven. Um, the right hand would be playing 10 and 11, sliding back down to 10, alternating between the slide here and the slide with your right hand. So this is what we're doing. Okay, what we do then is move it up a string and a fret at a time. I started out playing blues, and uh, then Jimi Hendrix is one of my first big, big influences, and still continues to be. I just thought he was God. He's great. Uh, he was more than just a guitar player. I mean, he, it was uh, came out of his soul. I think more than anything, it was uh, uh, the guitar was just a vehicle for his voice, whatever he wanted to express. And I think that's the ultimate uh, goal for a guitarist. And to attain that goal, I think it takes a combination of technique and feel. And I've always lacked a little bit, or a lot actually, in the technique and theory department, which I'm continuing and striving to uh, get better at. So uh, as long as you're continuing to progress, I think uh, there's hope. And uh, uh, I think that's what a lot of players need to do, uh, assess themselves and think, well, uh, where am I lacking in the field department or the technical end of it? In my case, it's the technical end of it. Combine the two schools. And if you do that, I think you're on the right track. So keep up the good work. Good luck.